Good. So okay. thank you again. I'm plastic surgeon here in Brazil. And my story with lipedzima started 10 years ago when I first met this young lady. And Talita told me a sad story. She told me that she was very annoyed about her small waist and fat legs. And she didn't uh, manage to, to deal with that. She had often bruises, heaviness on the legs, often pain, and it got worse after the use of contraceptives. And it caused a lot of emotional stress and a feeling of guilty. And she told me that uh, she had lipedema and that was the first time that I heard that, that word. And she asked me to do the, a liposuction on her legs. And 10 years ago, especially in Brazil, it was a very initial experience. They didn't, there, there was not much literature about that, but we, we did it. So that day we took out five liters of fat from her legs. This is the day after the surgery. And surprisingly, she told me that her life got better. She had less bruises, less heaviness on the legs, and it improved the quality of life. And it was very, very special and very interesting to me because it was the first time that I started thinking about liposuction as a tool to improve the health, to improve the function of the legs. So it really changed my view about my profession. And since then, I've been working almost every day with lipedema. So what's lipedema? It's a disease. It's a chronic disease from the adipose tissue. Um, it's characterized by this proportion about the, the position of this fat. It uh, affects the extremities, the lower limbs, the upper limbs, and also cause a lot of emotional impact. Um, although it's very, very common, it's believed that it affects 10% of the adult women in the world, which is about 10 million women here in our country. And it has only been recognized as a disease by the World Health Association since 19, 2019, sorry. And it was adopted here in Brazil last January. So now we can officially say that lipedema is recognized as a disease in our country. And unfortunately, it's not uh, known by many patients, even by the health professionals, and it's not covered by our public health system. So the diagnosis is based on the story of the patient. She always complains about pain, about uh, something that goes to their legs, but it spares the hands and the feet. That's why they have what we call cankles. Um, they often have hematoma formation and the size of the legs doesn't uh, slow, uh, shorten even with weight reduction. That's why it's very stressful for these patients. Um, it's not uh, yet fully believed uh, the, 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 the causes of the disease. Uh, we often see that there is a genetic predisposition. So 60% of the patients have a relative with lipedema, but the onset is caused by hormones. So there is a strict relationship with estrogen and it worsens with lymphatic, broad capillaries and inflammatory uh, crisis. Uh, it's divided in five types. In type one, it affects the navel and the hips. In type two, it goes from the pelvis to the knees. And in type three, it goes from the pelvis to the ankle, so the whole lower limb. In type four, it affects the upper limb. And in type five, it takes only the cost. But what's um, stressful for the patients is that it's a chronic and progressive disease. So from time to time, it goes from stage one, which is the volume, to stage two, where we can see walnut-sized nodules on the legs. And in stage three, the skin starts being compromised. There is the formation of the, the tides and the, the legs. And finally, the final stage of the disease is stage four, where we can see the lymphatic damage also. So it's progressive and it's very stressful to see, for example, for a patient, a young patient, that her uh, grandmother is in stage three, for example. So the treatment is basically divided in two pillars, what you call conservative treatment. And that's why uh, this speech is very, very important. I, I believe that the, 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 the saying the is very uh, 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 close to our objectives 
that you make a uh, multidisciplinary approach because what we need, in fact, is to try to change the lifestyle of the patient, either to reduce inflammation, less pain, less bruises, less heaviness on the legs, either to prepare this patient for a later surgery, and after the surgery, also to keep their long-term results. So we always try to uh, work with the lifestyle of this patient, which is a simple idea, very, but in practice, it's very complicated to improve. And so the pillars of the treatment are an anti-inflammatory diet, um, regular physical activities, especially low impact ones, uh, when possible to avoid sex hormones because estrogen and progesterone is the trigger for this disease. And uh, some supplements that are still is under study and it's not fully uh, comprehensive and fully proved that they have uh, actual uh, effects on the disease. So of course that it's not done only by me. So in our institute, we have uh, two vascular surgeons, we have endocrinologists, nutritionists, and also physical therapists. So I'm very thankful for, for this team. And I'm going to speak a little bit about each of us. Um, Claudia is our nutritionist. And our, uh, our idea is that lipedema is an inflammatory disease. And inflammation can be managed by healthy habits. And our typical Western pattern of diets is a lot of sugar, a lot of fat, a lot of artificial products, and it worsens the, the inflammation. So one suggestion is to adopt um, what we call Mediterranean diet, which is based in whole grains, in nuts, more vegetables, to try to substitute the butter for olive oil, fish, and less meat, less fat. So this is uh, less alcohol, of course, and it's interesting, uh, this is a 20, sorry, 2021 study, uh, uh, trying to understand the effect of this diet on these lipedema patients. So the study, uh, the study started to uh, improve the 40% of carbo, 30% of proteins, especially vegetable proteins, and 30% of fat. And the 29 patients studied, uh, with a plant-based diet with fruits, holy grains, and vegetables, uh, less sodium, and 25 grams of fibers, showed that they had less pain, less swelling, um, a reduction of the fat on the legs, but a maintenance of the muscle mass. So we all should adopt this kind of idea, but especially the lipedema patients are very uh, happy with this, with this diet. Um, this is our physical uh, therapist, and she works with clinical therapy in order to reduce pain for these patients, in order to modulate inflammation, to manage edema, and of course, also to improve aesthetics. And this is a very uh, connected to uh, Sigvaris work because she uses a lot of techniques that is in line with your products. So she works with uh, drainage lymphatic, intermittent pneumatic compression, biomodulation. Uh, so these are some examples. Uh, there are some light wavelengths that um, improves the, 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 the leg, reduces the inflammation. So this is an example. This is what they call in dermology, which is a kind of maneuver to free the fascia from the muscle, to release the fascia and improves the inflammation. Uh, they also work a lot of pulling out the fluids by drainage lymphatic, especially after the surgery. Bandaging, which is also in line with your products, wraps, bandaging, and intermit intermittent pneumatic compression. So this all uh, gives a better quality of life for these patients. Um, we are going to have Dr. Thomas that are going to, to show us uh, a better uh, example of this. Uh, this is our endocrinologist, Andre, uh, works with obesity. I'm going to be very stressful with this uh, idea that obesity is not lipedema, but sometimes they are together in these patients. And he also works with hormones orientation. 
So these are different conditions, in fact, and there are a lot of prejudice over these patients because uh, lipedema is completely different for obesity. This is a very a strong case with an American patient that has anorexia, has bulimia, and she still kept the fat of her legs in spite of almost dying of hunger. So she does a lot of campaigns in the internet saying that we should, we must, in fact, differentiate lipedema from obesity because it causes a lot of stress with no uh, work for these patients. Um, this is another patient of mine which was working out 10 times per week, every morning and every evening, making training. Uh, she managed to, to eliminate the fat from her abdomen, but her leg didn't respond to that. And finally, this is another patient of mine that lost 35 kilos of fat after the bariatric surgery, but she still kept the fat from her legs. So this is a condition that we have to, to stress. And this is something that caused a lot of um, stress to the patients that they, they, they feel that this, it's their guilty to have this disease. And it's not, it's a um, genetic disease that's answering to hormones. So there is no, no problem with her style in these uh, extreme cases, but if a disease that it's not their guilty. And this is our vascular surgeon. And we often work together doing the surgery, the surgery at the same day. So often Victor starts the surgery by working with the varicose veins. She does, he does the varicose vein surgery. And just after we start to remove the lipedema uh, by the liposuction. So the surgery of uh, lipedema is uh, done by this journey. The patient starts by doing the diet, physical activities, but unfortunately, it's usually able only to remove 10% of the fat from the legs, a 10% reduction. After that, when the patient has this established, we orientate her to go to the surgery where we can remove up to 40% of the volume of the legs and then the patient goes back to the diet and goes back to the physical activities for her life. And according to the last year's um, American guideline to treat lipedema, the surgery is the only available technique to remove these abdominal cells. So what we believe is that we should join these techniques, the conservatory treatment and the surgery to have the best results. Uh, these are some studies uh, that um, uh, stress the, 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 the paper of the surgery. So this is an American study from 2021 with 128 female patients. And a lot of them reported a better quality of life, 86%, better mobility, 96%, and of course, volume reduction after the surgery. And there are also some bridge studies. We follow up for 80 years, Dutch studies also, showing that these good results keep for life. So even after eight years of the surgery, the patient refers a better quality of life, 84%, better improve, objective improvement, less pain, less bruises, and also subjective improvements. So what we do is a surgery, a big proportion liposuction, like in this case, where we worked on the legs. We do a technique that's called lymphatic sparing technique, which is to use small cannulas in a movement parallel to the leg in order to avoid damage from the lymphatic. And this is just a curiosity, but uh, due to the nodules that they have the fat, we have a lot of obstruction on the cannulas. So even the, the, the more the patient has fibrosis, the more they have nodules. So it's difficult to do liposuction sometimes because it, there is a lot of obstruction of the cannulas. So we have to keep uh, cleaning it every time during the surgery. That's why we finish the surgery by uh, manual removal of the fat because these nodules are so big that the cannula cannot remove it. So at the end of the surgery, this is 
when we did the surgery on the left leg and not uh, still on the right leg, we removed in this day eight liters of fat. These are the nodules. And this is the result after three months. Um, I believe that the, the, the removal of the fat uh, improves, of course, the shape and the weight of the legs, but the skin laxity is a problem on the tights. So we, 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 we see often this problem of the, the skin. That's why sometimes we have to work with technologies to improve the production of the collagen of, on the legs. There are some uh, technologies that are doing uh, uh, the uh, augmentation of the, the collagen production by heating the skin. This is an example with laser. We are heating the skin, monitoring the temperature with a thermal camera to avoid burns. And in bigger cases, in like stage three lipidemas, we have to remove the excess of skin and do bigger liposuctions and also laser. So in a case like this, we do all we have. This is, for example, an, um, an eight liters of fat removal, three kilos of skin removal, laser. This is the result after three months. And then we went back to the surgery to work on knees and legs. And we removed seven liters of fat from the legs. And this is the result after six months. So a 20 kilos removes removal from the legs, from the lower limbs. Some cases, the result on the legs, five liters of fat removal, the result after one year. That's why they say that their life has improved the quality of life because they feel more normal. You see, you can, they can use boots, they can use some shoes that they, they couldn't use before. Um, this kind of patients has a lot of stress because it's impossible to take a bus, it's impossible to take a plane with the, this kind of shape of the tights. So an 11 liters of fat removal from this to this result, result and then again, another surgery. So it's step surgeries in bigger cases, uh, almost 10 liters of fat from the legs and the knees and to reach this result. So we found that the, the Lipidema Brazil Institute because it's a very, very big problem here in our country. Uh, in fact, this is the first institute focused on Lipidema. And our mission is really to transform this reality of these patients here because it's said there is no knowledge about this. There is not specialized treatment for these patients. So we work with, on assistance, of course, but also education. That's why I'm so thankful for this opportunity today. And also I'm very proud of our uh, social transformation program. So as I said, we have a multi-specialty team. So the, 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 the speech goes with our philosophy of work. Uh, we also work on research and education. This was, I'm very happy to, 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 to inform that this publication was uh, uh, done last year, last week. So showing the lymphatic improvement after the surgery. So this is interesting to see that the surgery may also work on the lymphatic system, not only on the fat of the patient. And I'm very, very thankful to Sigvaris for the support because you are working very much with our NGO. Our NGO is working with the education for the patients, trying to fight for the right for these patients and also offering free treatments. So this was a campaign that we are doing. This it was last week's uh, photo from a park from, uh, from Sao Paulo, where we are going to, 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 to try to, to show the population that there is something called lipidema. We uh, managed to join 200 people at the park. And this is our next patient that's going to, to go the, to do the free surgery. Uh, Tamir is, is a warrior. She does CrossFit every morning in spite of her 200 kilos of fat. And thanks to Sigivaris, we are going to do her free surgery next month. She has a stage four lipidema with the lymphatic damage on her legs. So as a conclusion, I'd say that the most important mission that I believe 
is still to, to do the awareness about lipedema. It's not well known by the health professionals. It's uh, very little known in our country. So we are really fighting to democratize the access to the treatment here in Brazil. We are trying to do the access to the, our public system for the lipedema patients. And I'm very thankful for the opportunity to show my, my work here. And we are very hard trying to, to spread the knowledge and the training also for health professionals. So thank you.